Today I stand in supreme opposition to the subjugation of liberty as shown by our elitist oppressors who continue to add heavy chains of enslavement to the masses around the world and particularly in Canada. As a nation in crisis and a realization that time is not on our side, there will be no tolerance for anything other than an effort to preserve national sovereignty and to seek truth and justice for all through nonviolent policies based on open government, public awareness, compassion, kindness, and a commitment to protect property and inherent human rights. There's an old saying that goes, don't steal, the government hates competition. Now I'd like to read a, a, a short piece from G. Edward Griffin uh, from Freedom Force International website. There's nothing more common in history for oppressed people to rise up against their masters and at great cost in treasure and blood throw off the old regime only to discover that they have replaced it with one that is just as bad or worse. For most in history, it has been a habit of men to focus on personalities rather than principles. They have thought that the problem was with the man who rules, not with the system that sustains him. So they merely replace one despot for another, thinking that the new one will be more wise and benevolent. Even if the new ruler has good intentions, he may be corrupted by the temptations of power. And in those rare cases where he is not, he eventually is replaced by another who is not as self-restrained. Even today, with so much talk about fighting to defend freedom, who can stand up and define what that means? For some, freedom means merely not being in jail. Who can define the essence of personal liberty? Who can look at you in the eye and say, this I believe, and I believe it for the reason, and this other reason, and this reason also. The world is dying for something to believe in. A statement of principles that leaves no room for misunderstanding. A creed that everyone of good faith toward their fellow human beings can accept with clarity of mind and strength of resolve. If you don't stand for something, you fall for anything. Winston Churchill had said, we contend that for a nation to try to tax itself into prosperity is like a man standing in a bucket and trying to lift himself up by the handle. Now to turn towards the real root of the issue. It's beyond just tax policy. It comes down to the issuance of currency and monetary policy. The bankers. These are the ones behind it all. Always follow the money. This is the root issue. Mayor Amsel Rothschild, one of the richest, most powerful people in the entire world by his own means, has quoted, give me the right to issue and control a nation's money and I care not who governs the country. Thomas Jefferson, the founding father of the United States said, I believe that banking institutions are far more dangerous to our liberties than standing armies. If the American people ever allow private banks to control the issuance of their currency, first by inflation, then by deflation, the banks and corporations that will grow up around them will deprive the people of all property until their children wake up homeless on the continent their fathers conquered. The issuing power should be taken from the private banks and restored to the people who own the, who properly it belongs. Our immediate solutions. Our Bank of Canada is the answer to many of the systemic challenges Canadians face today. As a nation, we not only have the right, but a duty as well, to use what is collectively ours, the Bank of Canada, so we can keep what is rightfully ours to enhance our economy without the burden of excess, excessive taxation. Yeah. A re-empowered Bank of Canada is critical to the survival of Canada as an independent and sovereign nation. The Bank of Canada, unlike the Federal Reserve in the United States, is wholly owned by the people of Canada. It was nationalized in 1938 and was used very successfully to fund infrastructure, social programs, education, etc. for the benefit of all Canadians. It was used to bring us out of the Depression, funded World War II, 
to build highways such as the McDonald Cartier Freeway, public transportation systems, subway lines, airports, the, airports, the St. Lawrence Seaway, our universal health care system, our Canadian pension plan. Unfortunately, since Canada adopted the economist Milton Freeman's theory of monetarism in 1974, this has not been the case. And for one, and one can track the progression of the dismantling of Canada since then. By 1974, Canada's accumulated federal debt since Confederation was $18 billion. Three years later, by 1977, after the government reduced its use for the Bank of Canada to, public, to carry public debt, it has risen 3,000% to $528 billion. Woo! Today, the debt is $500 billion and counting. 95% of which is compounded interest owed to private banks and investors. Currently, Canadians pay $37 billion approximately per year servicing the debt. We must return the Bank of Canada for a minimum of 50% of government-created money. It is essential to maintaining our sovereignty. Our monetary system must not be in complete control of private bankers and corporate elites. Government-controlled money could also be used to incrementally repatriate our debt back to the Bank of Canada, eventually eliminating the need of paying interest to the private banks. This means lower income taxes for all. It could fund new infrastructure, roads, bridges, hospitals, schools. It could be built at a fraction of the cost because of reduced interest costs. We have the opportunity to do this now. Why aren't we doing this? It could also lend to provinces and municipalities at near or zero interest with the proviso that they maintain a certain level and a quality of health care, housing and education that means lower property taxes for all. Improve our universal health care system, reducing wait times and improving and removing private public partnerships. It could alleviate yes, it could alleviate suffering of the poor, homeless, drug addicted and mentally challenged. Ensure a minimum of 50% of new money supply would be, would be government-controlled money on which no interest is paid. All we need to do is amend the Bank Act requiring banks and other, uh, and other deposit-taking institutions to maintain statutory cash reserves with the Bank of Canada. A re-empowered Bank of Canada is critical to the survival of Canada and an independent sovereign nation.